Okay, class, picking up where we left off at, we're on D. It says, use the model to determine the amount of acetaminophen left after six hours. So we would take A of six is equal to 500 times 0 0.7579, and that would be taken to the sixth power, which is approximately... 94.76 milligrams and that is your final answer now we will scroll down here to the next page and it says here remember the increase or decrease in a linear function is additive we say the dependent variable increases or decreases by a numerical amount per unit increase in the independent variable the increase or decrease in an exponential function is multiplicative. The easiest way to describe the change is to express it as a percent increase or a percent decrease per unit increase in the independent variable. So let's apply this. We look here at A. We have example three. It says the population of the U.S. Virgin Islands in thousands at T years since 2008 can be modeled by V of T is equal to 108 0.73 to the T power. Now we know this is set up as A times B to the T. So we know that this is exponential. We know that this formula is exponential. Now, we're given our A is 108 and our B is equal to 0 0.73. Now, it says here, now we must take our B value and change it to a percent. So this B is actually 73%. And as we learned in previous problems, we will subtract 100% from this 73%. 73% minus 100% will give us a negative 27%. Now we can tell what both of these mean. A is equal to 108. There was, or were, there were 108,000 people. In the US, Virgin Islands in 2008. Now we go here to what B means. I'm going to draw a little line here to separate what A means and what B means. Okay, now we go to what B means. B means the population in the U.S. Virgin Islands is going down by 27% each year. And we know that's denoted when we have this negative percent. So that is the explanation for A. Now we go down here to B. It says the number of single father households in the U.S. in thousands at T years since 1960 can be modeled by F of T is equal to 46.51 T plus 297. Single father households means a household with minor children headed by a single father. Now we look here. What type of equation is that? Of course you know. That is set up in y equals mx plus b. So we know that this is linear. Okay, now our next step. After determining that this is linear, we have to 
tell what our y-intercept is and our slope. Now our y-intercept we know is denoted by b. Our y-intercept is 297 and our slope is 46.51, which is our rate of change. Now we have to tell what both means. The B equals 297 is, in 1960, there were about 297,000 single father households in the U.S. Now, the reason why we know it's 297,000 is because in our first sentence here, it tells us that everything is in thousands. And the reason why we know this is in 1960 because this is the start date of 1960 for this problem. Now, and also we know this is years because it says T years. Now we come down here with our slope. What happens is this. We know that's the rate of change and since it's positive, we know it's going to grow. So the number of single Father households in the U.S. is growing by forty six point fifty one thousand. each year. Now because remember this is our rate of change so each year it's uh, increasing by this amount which is 46.51 thousand. Now we scroll down to the next page and we have example four. The federal debt in billions of dollars is shown for various years in the table and scattergram below. Let T represent the number of years since 1960. Now, first of all, we need to create another line here. We know that 1960, as far as this problem goes, is actually our zero point. 1970 is 10 years from that. 80 is two, another 10. 90 is another 10. 2000 is another 10. 2006 is 46. And 2011 is 51. Now, what we have here is this here. We're going to put this in our calculator, or you could use an Excel sheet. This would be our L1. And then over here, the federal debt itself would be our L2. Okay, so now, this is what we would end up doing. Now, you could take a look here at the scattergrams on page 34 for the calculator and also on page 35 if you want to use Microsoft Excel. Now, after you plot these points, you will draw a line here, and if you notice with this line, it doesn't quite hit every point, but you see that it's basically a part of this graph here. It shows a very good representation of how the federal debt is going. Okay, now, we go down here to A. Is it better to use a linear or an exponential function to model these data and exp explain why? Now, it's better to do exponential. And the reason being is, if you look here at this graph, what do you know about a linear line? That's correct. The line would be straight. But this line is curved. And we know a curved line is more representative representative of an exponential function than it is of a linear function. So we could put exponential and we could put because the points are curved.
Now we scroll down here to B. Now if we look here at B, it states, find the exponential regression model for the function with your calculator. Give three decimal places. Okay, now, when we're finding the exponential regression, now we've always found the linear regression, but first let's start off with the formula. It's y is equal to a times b to the x. However, we know we're using t, so we will make this f of t is equal to a b to the t. Now, we would substitute. We would have f of t, and this will be our formula, 224.057, and in parentheses, 1.084 to the t power. Now, in order to get this value, this is what you would need to do in your calculator. You would need to go to stat, and then edit, and you know to put in your L1 and L2. Then after you put in all of those values, then you will hit stat, then calculate, and then you will press zero, which is your exponential regression. Now, after you do that, you have to press enter a few times, and then you will see your final answer. And that's it for this problem. Now we move here to C. It says, what is the coefficient A of your model? What does it mean in this situation? So we know our A in this model here is 224.057. And this means in 1960, the US federal debt was about $224.057 billion. Now for D, it says state the base B of your model. What does it mean in this situation? Now we know B, according to the formula we found back in uh, B, our B here, our base is 1.084. And this states that every year, the U.S. federal debt grows 8.4%. Now let me explain to you how we get the 8.4%. Remember, we must change this B to a percent, and that'll give us 108.4%, and we have to subtract 100%. 108.4 minus 100% will give us 8.4%. Now also you have to remember, whenever your B is greater than 1, whenever your B is greater than 1, that means that it grows. That's why we have a, a positive percent here. And the uh, problem that we did when we subtracted and we had a negative percent, that was because that B was less than 1. And that's why it was going down in value. Now we go here to E. It says predict the federal debt in 2017. Is this interpolation or extrapolation? So first of all, we will put in 224.057 times 1.084. And of course, we start from 1960. So our T would be 57, and that would give us an approximate answer of 22234.51 billion. And of course, this is in dollars. Now, we have to determine if it's intrapolation or extrapolation.